Good morning, my friends. Got your Let's Read Through the Bible Together in 2023 Old Testament readings for this morning, this evening. If I'm still around on planet Earth, I'll be back with the readings for today from the New Testament. Yesterday, I uh, went through chapter 41 of Genesis. We'll start on 42 right now. And y'all, these names in the Bible, some of them, I don't have a clue how they're pronounced. So I'm just making a stab at it in the dark. And to my deaf friends who are watching my videos and reading the content in the closed captions, I have noticed that when I upload a video, sometimes it takes YouTube two or three hours after the video is uploaded before the captions show up. They are coming on all my videos. I've got it set up, but you might have to wait an hour or two or three for it to show up. And I just hope I'm pronouncing these Old Testament names good enough for the closed caption people to figure out what I'm saying. <laughs> or you can pick up your Bible and read it. It's in your Bible too. Okay, here we go, y'all. Oh, one more thing. My neighbor that lives behind me brought me a big bowl of ham and beans and dumplings plus some homemade cornbread and that stuff is good it was this morning just a few minutes ago it was three degrees three one two three degrees here and the windshield factor is minus 17 it is cold here y'all and as soon as I finish this video I got a hat going back on my ball head <laughs> <clears throat> All right, chapter 42 of Genesis, and one more thing, and I'll quit. Uh, in yesterday's Genesis reading, in the description box below the title of the video, I put a link to a recent video I made kind of talking about how we got to where we are through... Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and Joseph's life, how his brothers sold him into slavery. He got in prison for a false accusation. And anyway, just go click on that link in the description box of yesterday morning's Genesis reading. It is good. But we're back in Genesis talking about Joseph again. Some of these verses I used in that video that I'm referring to, but since I'm reading through the Bible, you're going to get to hear them again. But go go hear that video. It's a good one. All right, chapter 42 of Genesis. When Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, Why do you look at one another? And he said, Indeed, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down to that place and buy for us there that we may live and not die. Now, Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery, I just told you, and they took his coat of many colors, killed a baby goat or a baby lamb or something, took the blood from that animal and put it on Joseph's coat and then took it back to their dad, Jacob, and told him that Joseph had been devoured by a wild beast. That was a lie. <laughs> Just go listen to that other video. But anyway, uh, soon, very soon, as I read through Genesis, Jacob will find out his son Joseph is still alive and his brothers that did all of that to him are going to come face to face with him as he is not the Pharaoh of Egypt, but he's high up. The Pharaoh has elevated him to a high position and he is in charge of doling out food to those who need it. 
and his brothers that sold him into slavery are going to come begging for food, and they're going to find their brother Joseph is the one they got to talk to. <laughs> so, it's kind of funny how God's providence works out, isn't it? <clears throat> when Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, Why do you look at one another? And he said, I, Indeed, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down to that place and buy for us there that we may live and not die. So Joseph's ten brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt. But Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers, for he said, Let some calamity befall him and the sons of Israel went to buy grain among those who journeyed for the famine was in the land of Canaan now Joseph was governor over the land Joseph the lad with the coat of many colors he was governor over the land and it was he who sold to all the people of the land and Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them, but he acted as a stranger to them and spoke roughly to them. Then he said to them, Where do you come from? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. So Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Then Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed about them and said to them, You are spies. You have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said to him, No, my Lord, but your servants have come to buy food. We are all one man's son. We are honest men. Your servants are not spies. Remember his dream that he, when he was just a little boy and they were already grown, he told them that he had a dream that, he had uh, bundles of wheat harvested and tied in bundles, and his was standing upright, and their bundles of wheat that they had harvested were bowing down to his <laughs> bundle of wheat. Well, here that's happening. He has the wheat, and they are bowing down to him, won't it? <clears throat> And they said to him, No, my Lord, but your servants have come to buy food. We are all one man's son. We are honest men. Your servants are not spies. Joseph said to them, No, but you have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said, Your servants are twelve brothers, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And in fact, the youngest is with their father today, and one is no more. The one that is no more. They were talking about Joseph, and there, there they was telling him that he is no more. But Joseph said to them, It is as I spoke to you, saying, You are spies. In this manner you shall be tested. By the life of Pharaoh you shall not leave this place until your youngest brother comes here. He, he Joseph, was their youngest brother. And you shall be kept in prison that your words may be tested to see whether there is any truth in you or else by the life of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. So he put them all together in prison for three days. Then Joseph said to them on the third day, do this and live for I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers be confined to your prison house but you go and carry grain for the famine of your houses and bring your youngest brother to me so your words will be verified and you shall not die. And they did so and they said to one another, we are truly guilty concerning our brother for we saw the anguish of his soul when he pleaded with us and we would not hear. Therefore, this distress has come upon us. And Reuben answered them, saying, Did I not speak to you, saying, Do not sin against the boy, and you would not listen? Therefore, behold, his blood is now required of us. But they did not know that Joseph understood them, for he spoke to them through an interpreter, and he turned himself away from them and wept. 
and he returned to them again and talked to them, and he took Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes. Then Joseph gave a command to fill their sacks with grain to restore every man's money to his sack and to give them provisions for the journey. Thus he did for them. So they loaded their donkeys with the grain and they departed from there. But as one of them opened his sack to give his donkey feed at the encampment, he saw his money, and there it was in the mouth of the sack. And he said to his brothers, My money has been restored, and there it is in my sack. Then their hearts failed them, and they were afraid, saying to one another, What is this that God has done to us? Then they went to Jacob their father in the land of Canaan and told him all that had happened to them, saying, the man who is Lord of the land spoke roughly to us and took us for spies of the country. But we said to him, We are honest men, we are not spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father. One is no more, and the youngest is with their father this day in the land of Canaan. Then the man, the Lord of the country, said to us, By this I will know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers here with me. Take food for the famine of your households and be gone and bring your youngest brother to me so I shall know that you are not spies and that you are honest men. I will grant your brother to you and you may trade in my land. Then it happened as they emptied their sacks that surprisingly each man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And Jacob, their father, said to them, You have bereaved me. Joseph is no more. Simeon is no more. And you want to take Benjamin. All these things are against me. Then Reuben spoke to his father, saying, Kill my two sons if I do not bring him back to you. Put him in your hands, and I will bring him back to you. But he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone. If any calamity shall befall him along the way in which you go, then you would bring down my gray hair with sorrow to the grave. Now the famine was severe in the land, and it came to pass when they had eaten up the grain which they had brought from Egypt that their father said to them, Go back, buy us a little food. But Judah spoke to him, saying, The man solemnly warned us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you send our brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. And Israel, Jacob, said, Why did you deal so wrongfully with me as to tell the man whether you had still another brother? But they said, The man asked us pointedly about ourselves and our family, saying, Is your father still alive? Have you another brother? And we told him according to those words. Could we possibly have known that he would say, Bring your brother down? Then Judah said to Israel, his father, send the lad with me and we will arise and go that we may live and not die, both we and you, also our little ones. I myself will be surety for him. From my hand shall you require him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. For if I had not lingered, surely by now, we would have returned the second time. And their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Take some of the best fruits of the land in your vessels and carry down a present for the man, a little balm and a little honey, spices and myrrh, pistachio nuts and almonds. Take double money in your hand and take back in your hand the money that was returned in the mouth of your sacks. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take your brother also and arise and go back to the man and may God Almighty give you mercy 
before the man, their brother, that they did evil to, that he may release you, your other brother, and Benjamin. If I am bereaved, I am bereaved. So the men took that present and Benjamin, and they took double money in their hand and rose and went down to Egypt, and they stood before Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of, the, of his house, Take these men to my home and slaughter an animal and make ready, for these men will dine with me at noon. Then the man did as Joseph ordered, and the man brought the men into Joseph's house. Now the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house, and they said, It is because of the money which was returned in our sacks the first time that we are brought in, so that he may make a case against us and seize us and to take us as slaves with their donkeys. Friends, when you do something evil like they did, you're going to have a guilty conscience. Your mind is going to be thinking bad things are going to happen all the time, just like Joseph's brother's mind is doing. So keep it clean, keep it true, keep it honorable to God. When they drew near to the steward of Joseph's house, they talked with him at the door of the house and said, Oh, sir, we indeed came down for the first time to buy food, but it happened when we came to the encampment that we opened our sacks there, and each man's money was in the mouth of his sack, our money in full weight, so we have brought it back in our hand, and we have brought down other money in our hands to buy more food. We do not know who put our money in our sacks. But he said, Peace be with you. Do not be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money. Then he brought Simeon out to them. So the man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water. And they washed their feet and he gave their donkeys feed. And they made the present ready for Joseph's coming at noon. But they heard that they would eat bread there. Well, they heard that they would eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand and bowed down before him to the earth. Then he asked them about their well-being and said, Is your father well? The old man of whom you spoke, is he still alive? They answered, Your servant, our father, is in good health. He is still alive. And they bowed down their heads and prostrated themselves. Then he lifted his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your younger brother of whom you spoke of to me? And he said, God be gracious to you, my son. Now his heart yearned for his brother. So Joseph made haste and sought somewhere to weep. And he went into his chamber and wept there. Then he washed his face and came out, and he restrained himself and said, Serve the bread. So they set a place by himself and them by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves, because the Egyptians could not eat food with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination to the Egyptians. And they set before him the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth. And the men looked in astonishment at one another. Then he took servings to them from before him, but Benjamin's serving was five times as much as any of theirs. So they drank and were merry with him. And he commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill the men's sacks with food as much as they can carry, and put each man's money in the mouth of his sack. I also put my cup, the silver cup, in the mouth of the sack of the youngest, and his grain money also. So he did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. As soon as the morning dawned, the men were sent away, they and their donkeys, where they had gone out of the city and were not yet far off. Joseph said to his steward, Get up, follow the men, and when you overtake them, say to them, Why have you repaid evil for good? 
Is not this the one from which the Lord drinks and with which he indeed practices divination? You have done evil in so doing. So he overtook them and he spoke to them the same words. And they said to him, Why does my Lord say these words? For be it from us that your servants should do such a thing. Look, we brought back to you from the land of Canaan the money which was which we found in the mouth of our sacks. How then could we steal silver or, or gold from your Lord's house? With whomever of your servants it is found, let him die, and we also will be our my Lord's slaves. And he said, also let it be according to your words he with whom it is found shall be my slave and you shall be blameless then each man speedily let down his sack to the ground and each opened his sack so he searched he began with the oldest and left off with the youngest and the cup was found in benjamin's sack then they tore their clothes and each man loaded his donkey and returned to the city so Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, and he was still there, and they fell before him on the ground. And Joseph said to them, What deed is this you have done? Did you not know that such a man as I can certainly practice divination? Then Judah said, What shall we say to my Lord? What shall we speak? Or how shall we clear ourselves? God has found out the iniquity of your servants. Here we are, my Lord's slaves, both we and he also with whom the cup was found. But he said, Far be it from me that I should do so. The man in whose hand the cup was found, he shall be my slave. And as for you, go up in peace to your father. Then Judah came near to him and said, O oh, my Lord, please let your servant speak a word in my Lord's hearing, and do not let your anger burn against your servant, for you are even like Pharaoh. My Lord asked his servant, saying, Have you a father or a brother? And we said to my Lord, We have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age who is young his brother is dead and he alone is left to his mother's children and his father loves him then you said to your servants bring him down to me that i may set my eyes on him and we did we said to my lord the lad cannot leave his father for if we should leave his father his father would die but you said to your servants Unless your youngest brother comes down to you, you shall face me no more. So it was when we went up to your servant, my father, that we told him the words of my, my Lord. And our father said, go back and buy us a little food. But we said, we cannot go down if our youngest brother is with us, then we will go down. For we may not see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Then your servant, my father, said to us, You know that my wife bore me two sons, and the one went out from me, and I said, Surely he is torn to pieces, and I have not seen him since. But if you take this one from me also, and calamity befalls him, you shall bring down my gray hair with sorrow to the grave. Now therefore, when I come to your servant, my father, and the lad is not with us, since his life is bound up, and that lad's life, it will happen when he sees that the lad is not with us, that he will die. So your servants will bring down the gray, gray hair of your servant, our father, with sorrow to the grave. For your servant became surety for the lad to my father, saying, If I do not bring him back to you, then I shall bear the blame before my father forever. Now, therefore, please let your servant remain instead of the lad as a slave to my Lord and let the lad go up with his brothers. For how shall I go up to my father if the lad is not with me, lest perhaps I see the evil that would come upon 
my father. All right, friends. That's it for this morning, and, and it's getting to a good part. It's all good. But you're going to have to tune in tomorrow to read the rest or pick up your own Bible and read it. All right, that's it for now. See you all later. God bless you. I love you.